What's going on, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today, I get to check out my haul for the month of February of 2023. So, join me! And welcome back, everybody. I know we're in mid-March now, and you're probably wondering, what the hell, man? What do you mean, your February haul? Well, I usually wait until my pre-orders come in before I do my haul, and some things were running a little bit late, and that's what happens. Uh, but this is my haul for the month of February of 2023. And before I go any further, please don't forget to smash that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. And I think a lot of you, and please let me know in the comments, these are the type of videos that brought you to the channel, where my haul videos I've been doing, oh my gosh, four, five years now, maybe, something like that. It's been a while since I've done a monthly haul video, or since I've been doing them, rather. All right, so we have here some compendiums, an omnibus, some oversized hardcovers, a big box set, and people sent me some of their books that were self-published, and I always like to leave links in the description of the video where people can acquire those. So let's go ahead and start with... Transformers Wars End. So here we have the final Transformers hardcover from IDW. And unfortunately, we did not get to finish the Phase 1, 2, and 3, or Phase 3, rather, of the hardcover. So the last one we got was Volume 3, and we still, to this date, as of this video, have no idea who the new license holders are for Transformers. This, however is the stories that are collected after the events of phase three so these are a brand new origin for a lot of the characters brand new stories this is not a continuation of phase three this is not phase four it's just a brand new rehaul of the universe of transformers starring some of your favorite characters but they did wrap this up and it wrapped up in hardcover there are a couple of series that they couldn't even get in the trade paperback like the second shattered glass series couldn't get into trade paperback format so since this is the new universe you're going to be seeing a lot of familiar faces and looking a little bit different uh, to me this particular universe started a little bit slow and it kind of picked up with volumes three and four and we got a couple of new mini series i like the fact that they're still using transformers from the japanese only uh animated series we're using transformers from g1 g2 and then there's a couple of appearances in here from transformers that only appeared in like the video games or i guess a little bit of beast wars if you're including that but this does wrap up transformers as far as idw this is the final hardcover it's the final collection and i believe this one retails for 59 no 49 dollars and 99 cents so that's all. Actually, let's look in the back for extras. So we do have some variant covers back here. And there we go. Just a little bit of extras. All right, let's keep going. I bought these from James Roberts himself. He put it something on Twitter that he was really printing or printing these little notebooks that helped him write. Because I love the IDW era of Lost Light and more than meets the eye. And these are his notes. His notes for the stories, his notes for the characters he was going to use. We love looking at stuff like this. This is signed uh, for Lydia, number one world fan, which she is. She loves that character. And this one is just signed for Omar. Um, but but I do like Hot Rod or Rodimus Prime. That would have been cool. So these are just kind of a reprint of his, or rather a collection of his notes translated from the cursive writing right there to actual print. So if you're interested in this stuff, you can get it directly from him. He's such an awesome guy. And I hope to get to interview him one day when whoever the new license holder announces, hey, we're going to have new collections for Transformers. But these you get directly from him. You can message him through Twitter or you can send him an email. Let's keep going with Transformers because here we have Rage in Heaven. For some reason, I cannot find my copy. So I had to buy this beat up copy that I found online. And yeah, this is going to have to do. This is Generation 2 of Transformers. But because Part 2 of my Transformers reading order is during that phase that's kind of non-canon if you will i did meet it for that so i guess i'll be filming that sometime this month hopefully airing it this month unless 
things get in the way and it'll be out either this month or next month for the transformers reading order part two and then part three sadly will be the last one with the idw face and hopefully by the time i film part three we'll have a new announcement for the new license holder all right this is a little bit of cheating because this actually was sent to me for my birthday and this is from my buddy jeff hartz doctor who that's what I call him. Uh, this is the vault, which for some reason I didn't have. He found it at Ollie's and he was like, dude, I'm going to send you this copy. He sent us a bunch of stuff that we'll be uh, using for giveaways or I've already donated. We had a party here last weekend and a lot of people were like, dude, can I have this? And I was like, eh, yeah, sure. I, I gave away a, a bunch of books and stuff uh, to friends that have kids. I love giving away books to kids, man. It's great. Uh, but this is the vault. Look at like this little thing right here i love the fact that that's collected in here this is so cool it's just the history of the transformer toys and the animated series going through detailed information about what's come before and is that unicron or is that the pro that's definitely the prototype from the movie uh there are things here that were not used for the cartoon or the tv show it comes in a nice slip case and can be found at an ollie's near you apparently that's where he found this that's the Beast Wars comic from Dreamwave, but that's been reprinted. And I'll talk a little bit about that when we go through part two of the Transformers reading order. But this is just something really cool that for some reason I did not have. And what the heck is this? Is this some kind of, oh, it's like a little print uh, or is it a little mini? Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Daniel, what the heck? Now, I believe this was printed by, I wanted to say Viz, but no, it's Abrams Books. That's who prints this. You can now put this back in there, of course. Wow, this is kind of a pain to get back. Little by little, we'll get it in there. The power of editing. You don't have to see me struggle putting that back in there. Mental note, Omar. Well, I guess not a mental note. Visual note, Omar. Uh, so the cool thing about this is that it goes completely over everything. The manga, the animated series. It's such a cool guidebook, the Transformers. My kids were fighting over who got to read it first. And me being the man that I am, I snatched it from their hands and I said, mine. <laughs> it's the kind of parent I am. My kids have plenty of stuff. I mentioned cheating a little bit because it was my birthday this month. And I'll have some kind of birthday stuff in my haul video for March, but some stuff came in early, like this Dracula book came from my buddy Chris, who sent it to me. This is Bram Stoker's Dracula, but it's an adaptation by Roy Thomas and Dick Giordano. And it does come with a ribbon. This is a hardcover and it was published by Marvel Comics. It's a standard size hardcover and collects uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula one through four. Dude, this is so freaking cool. I I didn't have this, and it comes with a freaking red ribbon. Like, this is the color of blood, like scarlet red ribbon. So freaking awesome. David Gabriel was in the chat saying, this is a really cool book. It is rated T+, by the way. It's got beautiful artwork. And also, my buddy Terry sent me this book right here. Uh, this is various scripts that were completed, well, most of them, but never were illustrated. That's what this is. So this would have been issue 30 because the magazine ended with issue 29, which is the Planet of the Apes magazine. And it had the original movie adaptations. This would have been all new stories and a new direction that the magazine would have gone in. There's still some artwork in here, but it's mainly script. I was a little confused as to what this was, but that's what this project is. It's not printed um, anywhere. It's not like a reprint of something that because this stuff never came out. But it does have some artwork in here and some original art. That was a really nice surprise from Terry. So big shout out to Terry for this awesome surprise. Now, this is from Chump Magic. This is Savior. He sent me a copy of what was the i guess the original idea for savior he sent us a bunch of stickers which my daughters and their friends love and jump magic is the writer and i believe he's also the artist if i'm not mistaken okay no story is by petty mojo the artist is chump magic and dude his art is so adorable now i will say this is not for kids it looks like it's for kids but it's got strong language it's got violence and it's got 
some sexual content so be advised it may look like it's for kids and i'll leave a note in the description of the video where you can pick yourself up a copy of this this is what if the devil saved the world that's exactly what this is and he teams up with a little girl and a robot to save humanity and i haven't read it all i just read the first i guess it's kind of the uh the preview to this I think that's what was sent to me a while back, and this is the final product. It is in this hardcover format. Now, it is a smaller scale than your average trade paperback, to kind of give you an idea. Nope, I stand corrected. It is the size of a standard size hard or trade paperback. You can see from here, as a matter of fact, it's, it's a little bit longer. You can tell right there, or... Like this, yeah, it's a little bit longer, but it's just as tall as a standard size trade paperback. So that's Savior. Now, what is bigger than a standard size trade paperback is this deluxe edition of Bruce Wayne Fugitive, Volume 1. So my buddy Super Laughheart sent me a huge box of books, including these four hardcovers that make up uh, Bruce Wayne Murderer and Bruce Wayne Fugitive. And... It's in the Lux hardcover format. Available overseas, but I think it was only through a subscription service. So these aren't available everywhere. And there's a series of four. And I was like, oh no, I'm missing the third one in this. Now I have to go and find it. But luckily, uh, it was in another box that my wife and kids had put somewhere else. And if you're not familiar with the story, Bruce Wayne is accused of murder. And now he has to clear his name even his bat family turns against him so of course when he escapes it becomes bruce wayne fugitive now who goes after him and who has his back it's an awesome crossover with the revelation as to what really happened coming towards the end has cassandra kane as the new batgirl dick grayson as nightwing tim drake as robin and of course barbara gordon as oracle i love this era of batman and there's even some uh, asriel in here jean paul valley but this is the deluxe edition available overseas but in a limited print run now the deluxe edition that is available everywhere is Philadelphia. this is by rodney barnes and jason sean alexander with luis nct i believe is his name and let's see here luis nct yeah i was right uh marshall dillon is doing the lettering now uh, this is a series i have not read in trade paperback i haven't even open this up i just got it in the mail a couple of days ago and i said all right let's go ahead and add it to the hall sometimes i like to order books just because of the cover or because it's getting a hardcover treatment and for some reason my brain's still stuck on hey hardcover equals the best of the best so it has to be a really good story for it to get a hardcover this is published by image comics by the way i have heard praises of this book when it was coming out in trade paperback and people have asked if I've read it. So, no, I haven't had a chance to read it. But I'm digging this artwork. Kind of gives me a little bit of Sean uh, Phillips vibe there. But, yes, this is Philadelphia. Zombies, maybe? Looks like zombies, vampires. And it's a... Oh, it's an Eisner winner. All right. Hey, you know what else was an Eisner winner? Bitter Root, which I've done an overview already. I love this story. Sangria family, I believe is how you say it. Hunting demons and vampires in harlem in the early 20s love it i love that this is now in, in hardcover be advised though when you watch my overview there is an issue with the binding so i'm actually making a video on how to fix the binding on books like this so keep an eye out on the channel probably come out sometime in april now landon huber sent me a couple of books he is the artist on bleen and he did this book called punctuation man so let's talk about uh, Bleen first. This is something that he asked me if I was interested in. Uh, this is not for kids. It has some adult themes. It is a horror story. So I did want to point that out. Sometimes when looking at covers, people are like, oh, that looks like a cool cover. I uh, may have to check it out. So this is drawn by Landon Huber. John A. Kalunga is the writer. And this is a pretty interesting story. I just managed to flip through it when we were doing our live overview last maybe two weeks ago and it looked interesting it's up my alley it's this black and white horror graphic novel and it took a couple of years to make it feels like i haven't uh he wrote me a nice letter and i didn't want to get spoiled on this so i didn't get a chance to read it uh but it looks like a little bit of pumpkin head in here but the girl kind of reminds me of those stephen king girls like in uh firestarter i guess carrie why well, then I go with Carrie instead of Firestarter. So 
that's who is Bleen, is this girl right here. She finds herself trapped in this Sanctorum. So definitely mature, not mature content, but definitely older teen content is what this is. And it is published by Caliber Comics. I love to see Caliber Comics still in the works. And he also did something called Punctuation Man. Now, this is not a graphic novel. And I'll be leaving a link in the description of the video on where you can pick these up. And this is Punctuation Man. It's just satire uh, take on superhero genre. And I believe this is the one that is uh, drawn by him. Landon Huber. Yeah. So this is what the artwork looks like. And this is in traditional, like, comic book paper from, like, the 80s is what that reminds me of. And there's the back right there. Now, in one of my live streams, I did look at this book right here, but we're taking a little closer look. This is um, Kingdom Come, and it comes with this amazing metal freaking bookmark. Now, I don't know why I just slapped it. I guess the show is metal. Hear that? Metal! But this is by D. Ayayi, and it, it's all based on the folklore from uh, a lot of African tribes. And oh my gosh, the artwork is what got me really interested in the story. So this is in my pile uh, to read, along with a couple of other of those books that was sent my way. And I'll be leaving, again, a link in the description of the video. This takes place back in ancient times during the Nubian Empire, and it's all done by, I believe, an African team and it's stories that you don't really see a lot of so when people were on my live stream they were asking me what this was because they were looking at the artwork and they were intrigued by it but this is called uh, Kingdom Come and it is published this is book one by the way by okingdomcome.com so again I'll be leaving a link in the description of the video where you can pick this particular book up hopefully I'll finish reading it Sonic the Hedgehog IDW Collection Volume 3. For some reason, I haven't seen a solicit for Volume 4 yet, which is really weird because by now we usually have solicits for the fall of 2023. So I hope it still comes, maybe in the winter, but collecting Sonic the Hedgehog 21 through 32. And it also has the uh, 2022 annual and the 2020 or 2020 annual. Sorry about that. Not the 2022 annual. That would be weird. That would be last year's annual. But again, this is the era of IDW collected in oversized format. This has been available in, I believe, three trade paperbacks, maybe four, because that annual is huge. But I haven't had a chance to read this one. All I've actually, all I've read of, oh my gosh, is that Metal Sonic? And it comes with a ribbon. I love Sonic CD, dude. Not everybody had a Sega CD. So it was my brother that had it. And we felt very special because we got to play games like Sonic CD and Lunar. And then, of course, Lunar Eternal Blue. Which later on was remade for the PlayStation and the Sega Saturn. But we got to play KO Squadron, Flying Squadron. KO Attack Squadron came out on the Sega Saturn. Uh, we got to play Wizardry and Shining Force. Oh my gosh. Shining of the Holy Ark. I forgot about that one. That was it. And Popful Mail. All these games by Working Designs. But yes, that was definitely one of them was the Sonic CD. So every, every time I see Metal Sonic, I get excited. I'm sure in the same way that people get exciting for, but what's her name? Rouge and Shadow the Hedgehog. For me, it was all about Metal Sonic. It was the first time we saw a Sonic type of character that was a villain. So anyway, uh, yes, this is the IDW Collection Volume 3. Next up is Marauders Volume 2. So I had to get this one. I had Volume 1, but for some reason I never got a copy from Marvel for Volume 2. Not that they have to send me everything, uh, because I don't mind purchasing my own books i used to long before they ever sent me anything and this is x-man of course i was going to get it so this is the final era of jerry duggan's run on marauders so can't spoil too many things on here but the team is still made up of of course kate pride iceman pyro and bishop storm does show up from time to time and so does emma frost and I love the fact that they're using the new Hellfire Club members in some of these stories. And, oh, this is the flat. Okay, that's actually, I can't talk about that one. There's a reason why that flashback is there. And it plays an important part in one of the characters that shows up later on. But this wraps up this particular Marauders era. 
And this, of course, during the Dawn of X and Reign of X and Trials of X. And then the next era is the Steve Orlando era. So this is volume two of the oversized hardcovers of Marauders. Now, I've already done an overview of the Doom Patrol. This is Gerard Way and Nick Darrington's oversized hardcover. So if you want to go back on the channel, click the link above. It does have some artwork by Mike Alred, but I have done an overview of that. And speaking of overview, people have been asking me to do an overview of Milestone Companion Volume 2. Absolutely, if you want me to, any of these books, if you want me to do an overview of, just leave those comments down below. It's you all that I listen to. Now, I can't do every single request, of course, but I can try to do as many as I can before my brain explodes with too many comics but i will be honest this might take me a while because i just i just read the first freaking issue which i think is that yeah this static shock issue right there no this one right here yeah issue number eight this is the only one that i read so far but it's got beautiful artwork by the late jean paul leon oh man the guy was another person we lost way too early. But this is the latest compendium, Volume 2. Our Worlds at War, dude. I've, is it Our Worlds at War? No, it wasn't Our Worlds at War. It's Worlds Collide. The hell's wrong with me? All right, let's keep going. Oh, yeah, baby. Give me that House of Mystery. This is Volume 3 of the House of Mystery. For some reason, I need to go ahead and get the House of Secrets Volume 2. I don't think I have that one. But this is the latest omnibus of this era. And, you know, people are just spreading rumors about how DC is done collecting Omnis from this particular era. And even if they are, I just think that's temporary. I'm sure they'll be back to printing this stuff. They have a lot of stuff that hasn't been printed in Omnibus or in trade paperback format. Actually, I used to have showcases of these books, these type of stories, but I don't think they made it this far. This, of course, being Kane and then Abel, his brother, was over in the House of Secrets. And those are the two characters that would later show up in what? Sandman. Yeah, that's right. It's all connected. So House of Mystery works like your anthology series. It's kind of like your Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror, and Haunt of Fear. You have a host, this being Kane, and him introducing you to these stories that most of them are just like those Tales from the Crypt stories that are there to show a lesson there's a little bit of Sergio Argonas artwork in here they're used I haven't even had a chance to open this one Paul Levitz did an amazing introduction of the second book this time around it looks like it's Paul Cooperberg doing the introduction so I cannot wait to read this these are the kind of stories I like reading in between big story arcs that I'm going through kind of a palate cleanser because they're anthology series and they're not one continuing story but I love this stuff. So this collects issues 227 to 254 of The House of Mystery with a Ryan Sook. That is a Ryan Sook cover, I believe. If you're enjoying this video, please smash that like button and subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. This is just your friendly reminder. And check out our Patreon and Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. All right, all right. Back to the video. Wait, you are still in the video. Back to the overviews of these books. Batman, The Dark Knight Detective. Volume 7, still, is that a Sam, Norm Brayfogle? Um, still no mention of a Volume 8, but fingers crossed that that will come in the next catalog. And, oh my gosh, does this bring back memories? This was my era of getting huge into Batman. It was that Alan Grant, Norm Brayfogle, and Jim Apero era. And then, of course, uh, Chuck Dixon would eventually take over Batman. But, oh, Mike W. Barr, I forgot he was writing a lot of the stories then. And even Jim Starlin got into some of that stuff. But this is the Detective Comics. I believe we need one more before it takes us all the way into Nightfall. So, I mean, I don't think that they'll stop. And it's the Alan Grant and Norm Bray Fogel story right here. I don't think they'll stop. I mean, we've just got a couple more to go and that's it. Now, this does jump around a little bit because some of the stories were collected in the... Cape Crusader collections, one of those, uh, Cape, hey, there's Jim Aparo, my definitive Batman artist, uh, one of the Cape Crusader books, so this collects Detective Comics 634 to 638, 641 and 643, Annual Number 4, and Legends of the Dark Knight 27, and Batman 474, so I think we need one more of these to take us all the way to Nightfall. 
And speaking of one more of these, this is the final Birds of Prey. So we do have some missing issues that were not collected in this newer printing of the books. And I could show you. So we have Fighters by Trade. This collects all the way to issue 91. And then you have the Team Fights Back collecting issues 104 to 112. And then this is the final one, the end of the beginning, collecting issues 113 to 127. Meaning that we're missing issues 92 to 113. So those issues can be found in these two old trades in the Perfect Pitch and Blood and Circuits. There's a little bit of double dipping, but this will get you through everything. For some reason, I don't know what happened. DC did not collect these as these big fat trades. But um, so you do need to go back if you're a completist, of course. Do you need them? I mean, they are like some of the last Gail Simone stories featuring these characters. So I guess it's up to you. I, me, I, yes, I, I do. Uh, so this collects the last part. Now we have Sean McKeever and Tony Bedard taking over. Nicola Scott still, this, um, oh, by now Nicola Scott's art. Oh my gosh, I just grew in love with her artwork. She became one of my favorite artists after this. And then now she's doing, um, what is she, is she doing Nightwing? No, she's working on a Titans book. But then of course the stories with Greg Rucka in that Black Magic. And speaking of Black Magic, Black Alice shows up through here. Oh, man, I love this era. Even towards the end of this era, it was still solid. Not as good as the the peak for me was, of course, the Gail Simone and Ed Bennis run. But this still had a lot of heart, and I miss this era of DC Comics. This, this wasn't even the era that I grew up in. I just really enjoyed it. But this is the end of the beginning. A couple of years after interviewing him, here is his book, Outrage. Fabian Yusesa and Riley Brown, the same team that brought us... The, uh, De the Cable and Deadpool book, they bring us outrage. It's about a character that can go through the internet and beat the crap out of internet trolls. It's something I've been wanting to read. I know this was digitally published a couple of years ago. But this is the first collection of the book. And I believe this is published by... Yeah, right here. It's Rocket Ship Entertainment. So it is finally out and maybe I'll do an overview of this one because I love Fabian Nicias' writing. I think he is one of the funniest writers that we have out there. It's one of these guys that can crack me up just like uh, Peter David and Chip Zdarsky when it comes to writing humor. But this is Outrage, No Dust Jacket, just art on board. And finally, finally, we have We Live Volume 1. This was recommended to me by my buddy Ryan who's been hyping this book up. He kept asking if I'm reading it. I'm like, dude... I am waiting for the hardcover. And then the hardcover got delayed. This is from Aftershock by Inaki Miranda and Roy Miranda. And then the colors are by Eva de la Cruz. I said, don't say anything. I looked at the cover and I'm like, is that a cat in a suit with a little girl? All right, I'm in. I don't know what this is about. It looks like some kind of apocalyptic future just as I'm flipping through here. This is the first time I'm flipping through here, by the way. And I am in. I don't know what this is. But he hyped it up. He was like, dude, it's really good. Check it out. And I was like, all right, for sure I'm going to check it out. So I ended up finally getting it with my order. I had it pre-ordered for months, almost a year. But it is finally out. And finally, The Many Deaths of Layla Starr. This is a huge deluxe edition. And I say huge. Here's your standard size trade, or hardcover rather. So you can tell that it is the size of a deluxe edition. As a matter of fact, it's just a slightly bit bigger than a deluxe edition. Which I didn't even realize until I was doing a size comparison. It's a little bit, just a little bit longer. So I've done an overview of this book. This was one of my favorite reads in 2022. And now it's out in the Lux edition. There's a forward here from Fabio Moon. who One of my favorite creators with Day Tripper. And it's all about this girl, Layla Starr. That keeps coming back from the dead. But in a new body and in a new life. And it's all about, she used to be a goddess, and now she's looking for the person that's going to solve the death crisis, or give us immortality. And that's who she's trying to find through the many lives. Oh, this is such a wonderful read. Let me look. There is an afterword, because this is what I wanted to see. Some notes for the artist and for the writers. Okay, so these kind of like the breakdowns of the colors. And Essentials and uh, Development Artwork right there. The series cover by Felipe Andrade. 
and then a bio on the two creators. If you've not read it, if you've been waiting for a hardcover, here is your chance. Uncle Scrooge and Donald Duck Bear Mountain Tales. Now, I already have a lot of these stories collected. Carl Barks and Don Rosa, check, check. But Daniel Branca and Giorgio Cavazzano, no. So I don't have everything in here. Here's your table of contents. I just got this in the mail and I was so excited when I got this. Um, and it's just stories of Donald Duck and of Uncle Scrooge, of course. And all of it, I, I don't know, maybe most of it. Oh, there's some stuff in here. It's Don Rosa. Some stuff in here from overseas. Is that supposed to be Carl Barks? That's beautiful. Maybe most of it taking place on Bear Mountain, which is where, of course, we first saw Scrooge McDuck. So there's a lot of stories I've not read in here that are from European creators because they love the comics as well as you should. So this is a hardcover right here, $35. It is standard size. It's the size of the Carl Barks books. They're not as big as the Don Rosa Library editions. The Lion and the Eagle, one of my most anticipated books is out. And I forgot, honestly, that it was a soft cover, but it's a magazine size. It's like one of those DC Black Label books or magazines, if you're familiar with those. But this is all written by Garth Ennis and it's PJ Holden. And... I remember when I was interviewing him, people were thanking him for this particular character because you don't see a lot of Indian characters during this particular side of the war. And he was like, oh, you're welcome. I had to do a lot of research on that character. So, and I have no idea what this is about. I am so in love with his war stories. He's such a great creator when it comes to doing research and making sure that he doesn't leave things out. But as soon as I saw the title and I saw the cover, I was like, okay, I'm in. Now, let's see. This uh, 1944 Imperial Japan still commands most of Asia, determined to regain their hold on Burma. The British send a special forces unit, the Chindits, deep behind Japanese lines. Their mission is to attack the enemy wherever they find him. What awaits is a nightmare equal to anything the Second World War can deliver. Okay. Man, that sounds badass. So, I hope that was enough for you to pick it up, but... Garth Ennis was enough for me to pick it up. I was like, okay, I'm in. That looks awesome. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Ultimate Collection, Volume 7. I love these books. I can't believe this is out. Year after year, this kept getting delayed. Now, this is only for completists. There's nothing new in here that, as far as stories. These are just mainly pinups or covers during the Eastman and Laird era of Ninja Turtles. There's some new stuff that is not in the Ultimate Collections. I don't know if they'll be included in the compendiums or not, the hardcover compendiums. Um, and by the way, if you're looking forward to the compendium volume two, we did see the solicits of that and it's missing some issues too. And a lot of that has to do because during those times, Eastman and Laird let the writers and artists hold the rights to those issues, which is weird, so that's why they can't be reprinted without sharing some kind of royalties. So that that's what's going on with that. So there's a lot of behind the scenes here. There's no new stories. If you thought there was going to be more Eastman and Laird stories collected in here, no, there isn't. It's stuff from the movies, the Archie comics, some graphic novels, covers for the releases overseas. A Simon Beasley over? Hmm, it is. Uh, some stuff when it was released over by Mirage Productions. And then, of course, some of the video game stuff. But that's what this is. And I just want to make sure, it's, you know, if you're thinking you're going to, oh my gosh, there's a new Ultimate Collection. This is basically covers and some behind the scenes stuff. And some of this stuff you already have seen in the previous Ultimate Collection releases. This is mainly for people that like to complete sets, like my dumbass likes to do. Uh, this book retails for $49.99. And it is the same dimensions as big and as long as those Ultimate Collections. Giantess, a book that's in my pile to read, and oh my gosh, it's on the very bottom, so I'm sure I'll get to it in a year or so, just being re realistic. But it's about a giant girl that they find in the forest, and a village raises her. That's all I know. It's a European release. It's uh, published by Magnetic Press. I don't know if this will go dark. I don't know if there's adult elements in here. That's all I know, and Magnetic Press, I've really enjoyed a lot of their books. You can always tell it's a Magnetic Press by the round corners right there. Love those. Uh, but this is their latest release, this one retailing for $29.99. Big fan of the cover that stretches across the front and backboard. Love that. So nice. But that is Giantess.
And speaking of Magnetic Press, I did pick up the Love Box set. I actually picked this up in a Facebook group. Somebody was selling it. And this, if you're not familiar with, there's a few books in here. Let's actually go ahead and get them all out that were previously released in, as individual volumes. Uh, there's a total of five of them. You have the tiger, the fox, the lion, the dinosaur, and the mastiff. So all of them are done. Here we go. Let's look at Love the Tiger first in this beautiful format that has no dialogue. Now, I own a couple of these, but I did not have the Mastiff. So it's not the reason why I bought it. I just I love box sets, and I thought this was a pretty box set. Um, but here is the Dinosaur. I don't know if there's a specific order to read these in, but like I said, it's just this gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. Uh, Federic Bernard, Bramad and Federico Bertolicchi are the artist and writer on these books. Kind of reminds me of Gone the Little Dinosaur with more of, I guess, a violent side to thing because they are realistic type of stories. And here is the fox. This, is, this one looks cute. He's got a scar on his face. But again, no dialogue, just beautiful artwork and easy to follow panels. I don't know, let me see if there's a mature rating. It is all ages, so maybe these are okay to read. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was wrong because I thought they were, they had some kind of, well, they have violence because it's nature. This is the one that I did not pick up. This is the Mastiff book. Is that a platypus? Yes, but that's what they are. Last but certainly not least, this came from JP. So big shout out to JP. Um, this is the box set of Love and Rockets, the first 50. Now, he had an issue with Fanagraphics and the way that they would box these. So he was like, hey, I have a busted box and I know you don't have Love and Rockets box set. Uh, do you want it? I'm like, yes, the box is busted up pretty bad. But I was like, I don't have it. And I know I've been, I, you know, I've, I've tried to, here, let me get one out. Here we go. I know that in the past I've tried to read them and I was like, oh man, I don't know if I could get through this. But I've heard from my buddy Taylor Talks Comics, who runs our social media, that these books are uh, collected in a better reading order, a better reading experience. So this summer, before we go to Japan, Japan. one of my goals is to try to read Love and Rockets because I know there's a huge fan following. My buddy uh, James is a huge fan of this stuff. Uh, I know I've talked to my buddy Omni Dog and he himself, he told me, he was like, I can't get into that stuff, man. And I've tried twice to read it. So I will try one more time because, I'm, like I said, I know that this was a huge inspiration for one of my favorite comics of all time. And that is, of course, Strangers in Paradise. So I think somebody told me to get to the third volume because I have these from the library editions, uh, Fanagraphics, The Astonishing Melanie bought those for me. Like She bought me the entire set for my birthday one year. Maybe it was Christmas. But the artwork here is oversized. It's big like this here. Kind of give you an idea. Here's a deluxe edition from Image Comics. So it's a little bit longer. It's just a, sh just a little, little, little bit shorter than that right there. But the spines all have this connecting cover. And I think this right here is the extras maybe, like the uh, from Rockets to Love, 1981 to 1986. So maybe some behind the scenes stuff afterwards and articles about the brothers that put this together. There we go. So stuff that hasn't been collected in the library editions before. And some comics. Okay. Hey, we got some color stuff. Uh, but yes, big thank you to him. I did not mind that it was busted. But apparently they had trouble shipping a lot of boxes. So a lot of retailers wouldn't even carry this. Uh, because Fanagraphics was just shipping out. Here, let's look at this one here. Uh, damaged boxes. And, you know, it's hard to sell a $400 box set when the books and boxes keep coming in damaged but this is love and rockets and if you're a fan of love and rockets by all means please let me know in the comments down below i know it gets a lot of love and praise but that's it that as they say is that if you're interested in purchasing any of these books don't forget to check out our sponsors if you're in europe and you're interested in buying these books definitely check out walt's comic shop in berlin germany they have the cheapest pre-order prices flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all eu countries Emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, 
And you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. That was my haul for the month of February of 2023. Let me know in the comments down below what you picked up in the month of February, what you're picking up in March, and if you want to see any specific overviews of books that I haven't done already from this lot. Don't forget to smash that like button on the way out and ring that bell for notifications if you are subscribed already. And if you haven't subscribed, please think about subscribing. We do put out videos daily. That's it, everyone. Stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.